Hey guys, had someone ask about the temptation of Jesus. Uh, tonight and tomorrow I'll be doing quite a few videos. I had a few like little deeper revelations of scripture, shadows in the Old Testament of Jesus. I like to do those for the uh, secure, saved believers on the channel because you know I preach the gospel and I'm constantly re-showing people different ways to understand the simplicity in Christ. and It's stuff you guys already know. So I wanted to, to feed my brothers and sisters some stuff that... uh came to me, um, it's funny because I was talking with our our brother, Stephen, a soldier for Christ, we're at war, every time we get together, he'll start a sentence, and then I go, <gasps> or he'll, or, or uh, I'll start a sentence, and he'll go, <gasps> like we both get the same revelation, just craziness, uh, like iron sharpens iron, the Holy Spirit shows us something really amazing, see, he does it for everybody, I'm not special, I am not special, but the more you dive into the word, uh, the more God will do that for you. To ask the Holy Spirit, hey, show me. Show me these things. Because that book will never understand all of it. Not that it's confusing. I'm just saying it's got so many levels of of meaning in the Bible, and it's amazing. So uh, this question is about the temptation. Oh, so look for the videos. I'll be doing them. They'll be, they should be pretty short. It should be under 20 minutes. Um we wanted to know why was Jesus tempted, and was it possible that he would have sinned if, if he had given into it? Well, uh, for one, <clears throat> we have to know why he was tempted. What's the point of this temptation? And we'll look at scripture for that. <clears throat> Secondly, we know everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of Christ. He's the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Uh, so, also, we know he was born uh, without a human father. That's why he did not inherit the sin from Adam. Some people call it the sin nature. Uh, it's just sin that is inherited through the flesh. Uh, and so that's why we must be born again. And flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. Sin is condemned in the flesh. This body dies. But then you're reborn. You have a, a, a new reborn soul. And one day it will have a glorified body. That soul is positionally perfect. The, the sin of, of the flesh does not get imputed to that soul. But you, if you sin in the flesh, you reap what you sow in the flesh. But as far as your soul goes, you're positionally perfect because you have the righteousness of God. That's why you can't lose salvation. Uh, the video I'll do tonight is 30 reasons you cannot lose salvation. Obviously, because it's based on a work that's already done. Not what you're doing, but something that's already done. And he goes, here, I did the work, take it. You either believe him and receive it, or you don't. And you trying to go, yeah, but da 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 that's you rejecting it. That's it. You're saying that work really didn't provide what God said it provided. So, I don't believe it. All right, let's uh, look at why Jesus was tempted. And first of all, let's just confirm he was without sin, okay? 1 John 3, 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Uh, he became sin for us. He came in the form of sinful flesh, it said. See, he had God as his father, so he did not have Adam's sin, all right? So why was he tempted? I will tell you. Um, now, in the Old Testament, when they had to do the Passover lamb, Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But he is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, he was inspected by the Pharisees to see if he had spot or blemish. For four days, just like the Passover lamb was inspected by the high priests, for four days, Jesus went before the high priest for four days to see if they could find spot or blemish. And I'll show you those verses. But when you tie it together, you see why. Now, Jesus was tempted, I believe, uh, for our sakes. There's a couple reasons why. One, so that he could be a compassionate high priest and have uh, an understanding of what humanity endures by being tempted, how the flesh responds to it. So he can be compassionate and empathetic to us as an advocate for us with the Father. 
See, he is the mediator between us and the Father. So he had to experience what we would experience and endure the things we endure, but far more. Oh, his death was so incredibly horrible, but victorious and wonderful for us. God, the Pope saying he's a failure, the crucifixion was a failure. What are you talking about? He's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It was God's plan all along, and it was victorious. Oh, just people that don't have any kind of spiritual sense. All right, so I believe the temptation was to show Satan, all the angels. Remember, it said he, he put to shame principalities and powers. He put them to shame. And for us to know that he is the son of the living God that is without sin and is the perfect propitiation for our sins. Because he had to be without spot or blemish. I believe it was for his to have the human experience so he could become a compassionate high priest. Let's look at that verse over here in Hebrews. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So he can now, because of he, he's had temptation, he's gone through the human experience, God in the flesh, he can have compassion and understand our infirmities. That's not just sickness. That is uh, any kind of weakness or temptation or a trial in our life. So, for we have a high priest which not can be touched, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See, we can boldly come to the throne of grace because he can understand it. He can understand and empathize with us. That's why we can come boldly. We know he understands. What a wonderful God we have to have left his lofty place in heaven, humble himself as a man, being made a little lower than the angels, keep the law of God perfectly on our behalf, fulfilling the law, and then dying for our sins, being buried and rising again on the third day so that we could be reconciled to God and have eternal life as a free gift. What an amazing God. See, and it's sad that gospel has been lost. Does that make you want to offend God more? And just, oh good, I can sin all I want. No, it doesn't. See, the gospel is at enmity with the natural mind. <laughs> It's not after man. It's spiritually discerned. That's why people go, it's a license. It's a they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't see how they sin every day either. They don't get it. It's in the flesh. But the spirit is in perfect standing with God because of what Christ did. That's why we have to have a glorified body. And this body's got to die. Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom. All right? That's why what you're doing in your flesh has nothing to do with your positional standing. You have God's righteousness once you've trusted him. So let's look at him being tempted. By the way, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which means house of bread. He's the bread that came down from heaven. He is the manna from heaven. And he was born, as we know, in a manger. So like in a field and the shepherds were the first to visit him. The angels came to the shepherds. Why? Because the shepherds were keeping the sheep, the lambs that were bred to be slaughtered for sacrifice in the temple. That's why. That's where they bred them without spot or blemish. They would take these uh, uh, lambs that have no spot or blemish and breed them for the Jerusalem temple. Okay? So that's where Jesus was born. Do you see why God did everything? There's a reason he tells us it's Bethlehem of Freta, this specific little tiny town, because that's where the lambs were bred fulfilling he is truly the lamb of god and the old testament sacrifices were a shadow of him even the red heifer was slain outside the gate and the passover lamb slain outside the gate well he was slain outside the gate of jerusalem uh amazing stuff there so he says uh now so in order for a passover lamb to be the sacrifice to be accepted as the sacrifice for the nation of israel but Jesus was sacrificed for all the world, not just Israel. But it does say to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Meaning it was offered to them first because they were given the oracles of God. They were the set up our holy nation that the Messiah would be born through. But then it would be offered to all the world and, and everyone, no Jew, no Gentile, 
just one new man in Christ Jesus in the body of Christ. So, what do they need to do? If the Passover lamb is inspected for four days, then they had to inspect Jesus for four days. And that's exactly what happened before his crucifixion. All right? We'll look in some of these. I'm just going to give you a little bit of it. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. They were trying to find sin. Trying to see if he'll come against the law of Moses. Because how can you preach all this love and mercy and still keep the law of Moses? They're always trying to trick him. Then they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Here comes flattery and honey falling out of their satanic lips. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou recordest not the person of men. They knew he respected the poor as much as the rich. He didn't care. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? See, if he said Caesar, yes, then the Jews would hate him because he's speaking up for Rome and, and, and supporting their persecution. But if he said no, ha, then they could report him for speaking against Israel and the emperor. Do you see how they're trying to trim him up? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. So the only people they ever spoke harshly to were the self-righteous religious people. And they brought unto him a penny, or a coin. And he saith unto him, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God. So keep the laws of men as they're made, but keep the laws of God as well. And God's law supersedes man's law. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Now, there's many places where it says, God, Jesus saw the wickedness in their hearts. They knew he was trying to trip him up or to trick him or to find sin in him. Okay? We don't have to read all those. You can find them. And then Jesus flat out says, this is John 8, 46, Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He's saying, which one of you can prove I'm a sinner? Which one of you can say I've sinned? Not one. Not one. So, uh, there's tons of verses about him being without sin. Um, and in John, it said, Pilate therefore went forth again. This is more of them testing him. And said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Isaiah 53 tells us that he didn't have any deceit. And he was he made his grave with the wicked and the, with the rich in his death. That is a prophecy that was fulfilled in Isaiah. He was crucified with thieves, and he was buried in a rich man's tomb. Prophesied. Or at least a thousand years before. I think it's 750 years before his death, before his birth. All right. Now, 1 Peter 1.18, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So temptation was to... The, the temptation was to show us he passed the test that he was without spot or blemish. And then the four days prior to his death, they even tried to trip him up into sin by speaking sinfully. And he was still found without sin. So it proved to the world his temptation was to make him a compassionate high priest so he could empathize with our, our, our human trials of the flesh. What it feels like to be tempted. And he was born without that sin in his flesh. Uh, and uh, it, it was not, it, the main reason was to show all the world, to, to put to shame the principalities and powers, uh, to prove to us, to Satan, the fallen, the good angels, glorify God that this is the promised one that is without sin, that is the spotless Lamb of God. So uh, I thought you'd be interested in some of that prophetic stuff and how it worked together with the Passovers. I'm going to do a video series on the feasts, the Old Testament feasts, and how they line up and point to Jesus. Your mind will be blown. Uh, I'll do a couple more uh, videos tonight. 
on some uh, revelation I was I was seeing with um, I was talking about earlier. And again, uh, don't follow anybody that tells you they're a special prophet and I get revelation. Like they're special, we can all get revelation. God talks to all of us. We just have to be patient and quiet our flesh so we can hear Him. And I, my my flesh is always so loud; it's hard. He has to get in there and pop a thought in my head, and then I go look it up in Scripture and check it out, and I whoa, it is true. So uh, he'll do the same for you. I'm not special. No, you should never uh, let anybody get away with saying that they're a special prophet. A lot of these people are saying, I had a vision and a dream and a prophecy. And a, and that's good. God can use uh, dreams and visions. Absolutely he can. But really test what they say against scripture. Because in order to call yourself a prophet, you have to be 100% correct. And there is no prophet beyond Jesus because he is the prophet the ultimate one uh, when we prophesy today we're preaching God's word to prophesy to preach God's word uh, so in any case I hope you enjoy them I don't do as much as I should for the mature uh, secure believers because this is basically a, a evangelistic tool uh, to help people get saved and understand the gospel, to untwist twisted verses, to help people that are already saved get clarity and confirm their faith, and to lift up my brothers and sisters in Christ, and to make sure that they are continually being fed uh, grace and truth so that they can be strong and get others saved as well. God bless you guys. Night.